Hey, welcome back to the shop today. Today we're gonna be doing something, I don't know, something totally different. Something I have no idea, I don't know anything about, um, but something we're just gonna experiment with because I got a bunch of extra crap laying around. So um, today we're gonna see if we can make a wood burning stove out of a metal five gallon bucket. So never done it before. This can be for, uh, you know, a little workspace or I'm gonna use this probably for camping. So let's see how it goes. All right, so this is an old vacuum. Um, it is a five gallon stainless, might be four and a half gallon. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but this sucker is smoked. Yeah, it's, uh, it's dead. So, um, I thought, well, you know what? I've been kind of wanting to build a camping stove. I uh, saw some pretty cool videos on YouTube on how to do it. So this is going to be kind of my version of it. Um, let's see what we can do with an old vacuum cleaner. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this uh, filter and stuff off here, and that's just a T25, but I doubt you're gonna need this because you're probably not building yours out of a vacuum. All right, that's what it looks like inside of there. Okay, so after we get our motor taken out, it's our lid, we're gonna end up cutting that up anyways. But this is our bucket, it's actually pretty Hey, that's funny you can see me. Uh, it's actually pretty nice inside, so um, I think it'll end up being a cool little stove. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so borrowed a Lego box. This is kind of the idea. Um, use carriage bolt for the legs. Uh, use the scrap bucket. And then there's kind of the idea for the front of the door with some door hinges, a handle, and some old scrap metal. So let's see if we can make this work. Okay, let's go over some supplies we're gonna use here, guys. Of course, we already have mentioned the uh, scrap metal bucket over there from our vacuum cleaner. I did go to Lowe's and I bought uh, these carriage bolts. These are about a buck a piece, I think. I got some uh, nuts, eight of them for the carriage bolts. They're, I think, 12 cents a piece. A hinge kit was about two bucks. Handles are like a dollar and I had some more washers laying around. I'm gonna use a piece of scrap metal uh, for the door. It is painted, but uh, that paint should burn off pretty quickly. So all in all, very inexpensive. So this is kind of what I was thinking on the door. Um, just some hinges over here to the side. We'll cut out a shape a little bit smaller than this. And then this can be our door. We can mount a handle over here. Um, I'm not really sure about this, but I thought I could you know, pivot it like that and it could be a damper to let a little bit of airflow in. So um, something simple like that. First, first pass we still need to clean up the edges it's really sharp um so we'll clean that stuff up but not bad for a pair of 10 snips so there's somewhat of a close-up of how rough these edges are so we're gonna hit this with a flap disc and a grinder here I just got a uh, blue flap disc and we're gonna go through and we're gonna smooth all those up So I've traced out my door here on my sheet metal um, using my cardboard template there. Uh, so let's get this in the vise and let's try to get this cut with a grinder. Step one, we need to clean up the edges. Time to clean it up again with the flap disc. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I did get a little nick right there. I hope that'll cover, but um, you know, everything cleaned up pretty good with that flap disc. And uh, yeah, I think it'll work. Right now we're gonna drill our holes. Um, I didn't have one as big as I wanted. I do have a uh, half inch here. So I just kind of drew a center line there. We're just gonna guesstimate it. Doesn't have to be perfect.
three half inch holes for damper. Something like that. Cleaned up with the flap disc. Okay, so test fitting the door on, everything looks good. I checked the back side and we clear all the way around. So um, you want know, to make sure that your door is a little bit bigger than your actual opening. All right, so now I've got my hinges mocked up here. I'm going to probably mark them and center pop them. And then uh, we'll see if we can drill some holes. All right, with some uh, small hardware we have laying around the garage here, let's test fit this door to the front of our firebox. So I've got the door mocked up here and I've got it with a, uh, a wing nut. And this is kind of sprung a little bit because of the configuration of the hinges. I did cut out a, uh, a little flat piece of metal here I plan on mounting this here, actually flipping it up that way to act as a damper. So let's see if we can get that thing installed. So I kind of drilled this out a little bit in order to kind of um, kind of like countersink it there so that way this lid fits as flush to the door as possible. But I'm also going to ground the head of this bolt down. So I'm going to take it over to the workbench and ground it down. That'll do it. Much skinnier. Rough, let's uh, clean it up. On both sides. So the thought is. I'm gonna put another little handle over here, like this, and then I wanna get airflow. Just raise it up like that. Depending on how much airflow you need, you can actually set it against the handle there. And then I'll probably end up, uh, probably end up drilling like a, a stop in here and using a bolt as a stop. Okay, so after I ground the ground the bolt down, it was nice and flat, so it actually kind of sits in the recessed. And this will be my handle to lift the damper up. I did put a set screw in there, so and get that thing on there. Okay, this is the lid. Um, I'm not thrilled with the lock design, but um, it'll work. So. First of all, we have the damper. I ran a bolt out through here and it's pretty snug. So, you know, you can, you can lift it up. You can have a little bit of air. You can have a lot of air. And I'm sure this will loosen up over time, but I wanted it good and snug. And I put a stop there so that way it doesn't uh, droop past. As far as uh, the hinges go, that worked out okay. And the wing nut, you just simply turn it. Yeah, I know this is all pretty ugly, but functional and close it so that's the lid that'll go on the front of the stove so the idea with the legs with the uh carriage bolts is that it it ends up working something like 
you know, something like this. Of course, you know, for a little bit further back, but the bolts end up going up something in the middle, something like that. And then I nut them on each side, clamp them down, and then we have legs. So that's the idea for the uh, for the bolts. Okay, so um, I bought this strap material too. I think I'm going to end up uh, attaching these to some of the strap metal to keep the legs more sturdy because, I mean, they're okay right now. They're not super tight. I don't have them super tight, but um, once you put a load of, of wood in there, it, it'd probably be flexing a little bit too much. So I took that, uh, it was three feet of, I don't know, it's probably eighth inch, it's kind of kind of thick there. Um, and I drilled some holes in it and I bent them up at an angle. I'm gonna place those feet in here. So hopefully that stabilizes it some. Much better. Okay, so a problem that I'm having is this thread doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So if you put pressure on this, it could still slide out like that. And that's not good. So um, I, I looked for a tap to tap it all the way down, but I couldn't find any. So I had some really old throwaway <laughs> deep well sockets and I can back a nut all the way up to this and tighten it down. So I think this is going to work. Kind of crazy, but I think it'll work. So, um, got everything bolted in. Got the, uh, my socket spacers on there. I know it's crazy, but it works. Got the uh, straps bolted on there. Got it sitting where it's nice and level. And we have to do the flue uh, going up the top. So we got to cut a three inch hole in the top. Um, that'll end up being about right, right here somewhere. But uh, yeah. There's your camp stove out of a bucket for pretty much no money. Bunch of scraps, um, some old crappy sockets. Uh, you know, I had the majority of this stuff laying around the garage, all the hardware and everything had laying around the garage. So yeah, came out pretty cool. Okay, so um, I've already burned it. I've kind of forgot to show. I just took a pair of tin snips and cut the top out there. I did flatten this so I could put a little uh, container like that on top and maybe boil water. Um, I did that last night and the water that I put in it was about, it was about 33 degrees. It was right out of the refrigerator and it boiled. It took, took a little while, but it did boil. So it does work. Um, the pipe I just used, uh, got that from Lowe's and then I put a little, a little elbow on the end and it worked fantastic. I just used some uh, some hose clamps and put all the way around it. But yeah, that's what it looks like after it was uh, completely burned in for a night. 
And I had this old pry tool there. I kind of used that as my fire poker. Worked out, uh, worked out pretty good. I've already emptied all the ash and stuff out of it this morning, but um, yeah, no burn through. And uh, I had a fire in this thing for a couple hours last night, so it uh, it definitely served its purpose. Get her blowing. Sucking right out of the top. See opening it up really uh kicked up the smoke. But you don't see any smoke anywhere else. No leaks. Burning the paint and stuff off. Fire's roaring. It's just starting to turn color a little bit. I haven't even put any uh, fireplace mortar around there yet, and it's uh, already holding tight. A little fireplace poker here. So we're gonna do a little load of wood inside. It's working just great. Fire roaring. Got my little uh, fire poker there. Improvise. Got some water on top. We're gonna see if we can boil. Got our stack smoking. Working perfect. All right, everybody, I know this was definitely different content than you're used to, um, but if anybody's crazy enough to make a stove out of a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> there you go. This might be your, your potential how-to guide, so work for me. All right, I appreciate uh, everybody watching. If anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll keep you guys posted on how this thing's holding up. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.